the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. Love God you. bless you. You know what? This is this is a I really enjoy what we talked about this morning, this Sunday session. And that's I'm gonna break it down to a sections A, B, C, D, you know, whatever it takes to, to finish it out. But I do want to make sure you remember is uh, subscribe. If you like the video, uh, subscribe to it because that's what we need to continue to show that we're doing and we're on the right track. Uh, but if you don't, I'm still going to preach the gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the topic we're talking about today, the subject or the topic we're talking about today is right here. Uh, let me show it to you. I love this one because I'm trying to bring out a point. The point is right here. Uh, the descriptor or the title is down in the far head right corner. And I, I, I moved the other one as far as teaching the gospel is sure way it was written. I put that to the left now so that you can stay focused on what is your responsibility and what is the subject for the day. And this one is talking about is God. And when he said, I did not, and I guess we could change, we could change the title and say, God did not, so nobody will get uh, confused. Uh, but God said, I, I did not call you to be hateful, superior, or seek fame, glory. I didn't call you that. That's, I don't know where you got that from. I don't know why you think that's important. Because all that said, the, 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 if you're trying to be superior, I didn't call you to be prideful. I didn't call you to be superior. I didn't call you to seek vain glory. I called you to go preach the gospel. I called you to help others receive eternal life. I gave you eternal life if you are in Christ. You have eternal life. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes him should not perish but have everlasting life. He came, he gave his son for you to have eternal life. And now some of you sit there and say, well, I don't, you, you're gonna, once you die, that's it. Then you wanna have faith in that's up to you. But also those, those of us that are believers and many others, know that we believe by faith that there's another that's eternal life. And we want to be in eternal life connected to God. That's what eternal life means. Opposed to eternal death. Disconnected from God. So this topic, and then while we're showing this, uh, this, this week is to get you to internalize what, what you need to do as a believer. You, you call to preach the good news. You call to bring people out of the dark into God's marvelous light. You call to obey the, the, the guidance that God gave or Christ gave. But then you can either go by the law, but the laws are good too. You can go by the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is, is talking about, and you wrap it up in two great commandments to love the Lord thy God with all the heart, all our mind, all that strength, and to love thy neighbors as self. And then Christ said, I gave you a new commandment in John 13, 34. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I love you, that you also love one another. And 35 said, and men will know that you're my disciples for the love that you have for one another. Let's love one another. And we that are believers are both to encourage people to repent. Because Christ said, I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So let's do that, amen. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said, don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to make comments. It helps me to understand where I'm at and what I need to do to fix things. Because I'm not perfect. I'm not even trying to be. I know who he is. That's Christ. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. I'll check you later. Bye-bye. So, people, we, we, we're going we're gonna, to uh, start our study real quick discussion and uh, move forward. But the, the day we bring in... Uh, uh, a topic I thought is important based on the political situation that I'm even going on today is what we're called to do. What is it that we as believers are called to do? Bible, Christ said that by or not we must be born again. So then if we're born again, then what? Be Christ gave us a commission. 
So what the topic today is to bring people in perspective of what we're supposed to be. And here's my here's our topic. Uh, those who are now joining or will see this recording. <laughs> Uh, and I'll break it down into segments of one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Based on the time we started, it's going to be no more than two or three. Can <laughs> uh, I break it down like 25 seconds, 25 minutes, whatever? The title is, I did not, talk about God, I did not call you to be hateful, superior, or seek vain glory. We want to bring it up today because the fact is, who we're supposed to be, how many people are being ran away from the church? How many people are being manipulated to do things that's contrary to the will of God? How many people sit there, and even those who sit there and say they're law-minded, and Brother Asin, we're talking about that. How many people who sit there and say, well, we got to live by the law, actually go and violate the law of God to have superiority, to, to, to seek vainglory? And so we got, we got the commandment of Christ. Christ gave us a new commandment which is to love one another. Mm -hmm. And yet you got people, and I'm talking to people, when you go all the way back from the slave trade, the, the crusade, the Spanish Inquisition, uh, the Salem witch hunt, the, the, the Jim Crow laws, the, the civil rights movement, and the, the hate of what we saw in people. And you sit there and say, where is that from the teaching of Christ? If you want to call yourself a Christian. Now, I understand people does not Christians. I can understand the people that says that, well, Proud Boys, but you say KKK, they're trying to say they're using the Bible as one of their positions of what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. so, the, so, so I'm focusing on people who are Christians, people who call themselves believers in Christ. And I see you said, how do you do what you do? How could you be convinced to do what you do, knowing that is outside the will of God. So that's the title, and let's go straight into the uh, scripture. I'm gonna I'm gonna bypass the Lord's Prayer. I'll take that little supper segment uh, that I always like to do, just to you know remind people uh, about the scriptures, uh, about the Lord's Prayer, and the, the, the purpose of it. But one thing I do want to make sure you all remember that He left us the Lord's Prayer. He said, "Lord, teach us how to pray." One key word in there, I said, verse ten. You see that, Brother Asmer, it says, what was 10 said, first 10, out of the Lord's Prayer? Uh, uh, the, thy kingdom come. Next, that next, will be done. That, there's a piece I want to throw in there. Thy will be done. Right? Just like Christ said in the God of the Sinai, nevertheless, let thy will be done. Right? It's, it's, it's God's will. Not man's will. And, and that's what I'm concerned about so many people that, and that's what I think I'm concerned about people who have been ran away from the church. Because there's people leaving the church because you're saying one thing, but you're doing something else. You know? Christ gave us a commandment in John 13, 34. He said, What? A new commandment I give unto you. That you love one another as I have loved you. That you love one another. That's what he's, that's the new commandment. You know, you call yourself a Christian, right? If somebody calls himself a Christian, this is a commandment. He said that verse 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you are the church, you are part of the body of Christ, if you have love for one another. The scripture in 1 Timothy 2, 4, it is, it is his will, right, for all men to be saved. And, and the, you know, we talked about the big lie. We talked about what's going on in politics today. We talk about the manipulation of lies, starting all the way from, like you said, the, the, the transatlantic slave trade and everything else. We talk about people of color. He said he wants everybody to come to the knowledge of the truth. And most of you don't understand. Brother, I read that last one. I don't think you understand. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. <laughs> look, look. It won't be your political party, will it? Mm -hmm. it, it? It won't be it won't be your country. Uh it won't be your pastor. It 
that should put people in fear in itself. You will give accountability of yourself. And what you gonna say? What, tip brother, can you, can you explain to me what, what could you say? I know we talked about that one time before. What, what can you say when you go before God? Because everybody got to give it I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. You died in your sin. You didn't ask for forgiveness. We read last week about the parable of the, of the uh, what was that joke? Was it a rich man or something? The parable of the unforgiving servant. And, and, and we even said it wasn't even a parable. We said, is it, no, we think this was a, uh, <laughs> this was, this was real. Yeah, this is an occurrence. <laughs> we said, no, we think this was a, let me put this uh, down. I got it over there. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking at Facebook. This was, this actual Facebook, not Facebook, uh, YouTube. Uh, but like you said, is that we sit there and think that somebody else is going to speak for our behalf. <laughs> when we go before God. And he's going to sit there and say, so you didn't really want to kill that person. Right? You didn't really hate that person, did you? You, you, you didn't really lie, right? You, you, you didn't lie, right? <laughs> you, you didn't think you were superior than him, did you? Did you? It's almost like uh, what God said to Cain, right? Where's your brother? And mm he's going to say, am I, bro am I my brother's keeper? And God will say, yeah. <laughs> That's why I asked you, where is it? <laughs> I asked you also because I know what you did to him. You know, you, you're going to hold account. Cain was held accountable. And and, and some of y'all, maybe y'all just hoping to be able to get the Cain accountability. But no, we're talking end times. Whole different thing. It says right here in this scripture in, in Genesis, I'm just more of these more uh, paraphrase, but the fact is that God said, let us make man out of our, it, make, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have the men and the fish of the sea and the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and everything that came, the people upon the earth. And just to make sure you understand, I'm not talking about just males. He said, so God created man in his own image, and then God created he, him, male and female, <laughs> created he, them. You know how some people sit there and think it's a man's world. Mm -hmm. But God said, I created both male and female uh, to be here, you know, and God blessed them. You, see, you know how you're talking about when you think about the manipulation of a woman, the, 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 the exploitation of the woman, right? I'm the head. I'm the head of this house. So you do what I tell you to do. But based on this, is what, what did God do with the woman? God blessed them, right? Because he just said right before, right? Man, I'm feeling ready to them, right? And in verse 28, he said, God blessed them, didn't he? And he said to them, God, who them, brother Asa? Does that mean male and female? Yeah. He said it, right. So God blessed him. God said to be fruitful and multiply. What the difference is, see, God was not talking about a person of color. Because if, 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 and yet some of you have been, you know, the world anyway, has used and introduced social constructs into this very scripture to say that, oh, only certain people are blessed. You are, you are, you tell them, brother Asim, you're lying. You're lying and deceiving. If you sit there and think that God only blessed certain males and females, you, you're lying to yourself. And you know you're lying to yourself. And you're not going to go before God and sit there and say, well, Lord, I, I thought you made us. <laughs> you told us. Here's a big one right here, brother. Read that for us, please. Mark, Mark 16. 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out them, they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And the thing I mean, in fact, is that you're called to go preach 
Yeah. Maybe they, they, I don't think they know what good gospel means. What does gospel mean? Good news. Be, so, so you're not called to be bad news. You're not called to condemn people. You know, you know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? You're not called to enslave people. You're not called to discriminate against people. I mean, I'm just saying as a believer. That's what we're talking about separating, right, brother? Is, is what you're called to do. This is this is not a calling. And I, you know, it's funny when they talk about the being Peter, be a preacher or something, say, you know, you, you got a calling. Uh, the whole body of Christ has a calling to go preach the gospel. You know, so we we all got to recognize that we're going to suffer, we're going we're going to fast speed because we're just catching up. Now, brother, I need you to read this one because you know the title is talking about. He did not call you to to be hateful, right? He did not call you to be superior or to seek vain glory. Now, what 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 is this here? Proverbs six sixteen. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yes, set are an abomination unto him. Mm. A proud look, a lying tongue, mm. and hands that shed innocent blood, mm. a heart that de deviseth wicked imaginations, mm -hmm. and feet that be swift and running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Now, interesting. And the seven mean, I guess, make that abomination. So in discord, division, right? Among the brethren. The, the, the thing I'm sitting there saying, a problem, if, I'm, if I'm saying I'm superior to you, what the first thing he hated was a proud look. Right? That's the first thing he put in there. Is if you you, in other words, whoever's teaching in churches and ministries, teaching or endorsing or ignoring the speak against something, is saying it's okay to say I'm superior and to manipulate the system to keep my superiority, right? In other words, like you said, it's like. You tell them that well, these people can't read. Well, what we're gonna do? We're not, we're not, we're not gonna teach them how to read. Matter of fact, it was a point was it illegal for them to read, right? Uh, yeah, they got killed for it. They, yeah, come on now. Uh, matter of fact, then we're gonna. Matter of fact, if we get, it's getting so bad, let's go ahead and get a Bible for them. <laughs> isn't that? Isn't that? That's talking about you going out of your way, right? Yeah. You you actually wrote a Bible. Did the scripture told you, remember the revelation said don't take away from the prophecy or add to it, right? These people actually went and read, what they do? They, they, see, you see what I'm saying? How people went going way contrary to the gospel, to meet the expectations of somebody else, to, to even hold on to vain glory. Because I like that one scripture Christ went in there where he sat there and said, the, the, uh, what prophet, the elders are in the story, and he just said, what prophet's a man to, to gain the whole world and yet lose what is soul? You, you know that, that scripture? Mm -hmm. it's, so, so it's like, what, what is a prophet is that to, to lose your soul? And yet, you correct me wrong, we were talking about it. We convinced a whole swath of people, a lot of people in this world. But, but as you said, you went to, you found out this, this disdain and everything else of people from Africa throughout the world. And, and it's because it was perpetuated for what, hundreds and hundreds of years. It's, it's just, Contrary, and yet you call yourself a Christian, and and that's what we try to tell people. That's why that's why people I think for last that's why people leave the church, you know, ministries. Yeah, 
they looking at every time. I don't know about you. Every time I, I hear more about what people have done that runs people away from the gospel. And it gives leverage to other people that want to tell us not to go with the gospel because of the lies and manipulation that people have done. So proud look, a lie. Now look at this, the big lie. We talk about, matter of fact, there's something going on right now. There's a whole group of people in a political party that will speak and accept a lie over truth, over facts. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that that's that. The whole purpose of a fortune, guys. You all come in here. Or we'll listen to this. You, brother, as it was in a law discussion of stuff that we don't even want to. I don't even want to put on here. <laughs> so we're not at least alive. But lying, brother. Do you think the people don't know they lie? Uh, yeah, they know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you can get around it. Because <laughs> the, the ones I was hearing in, in the lately was yesterday was so and so got away with it. Did you remember that? Yeah. Now, I don't know here. Were you listening to some of that yesterday? Well, no, I I didn't. But you know, there's always the what about isms. <laughs> you know. But not being hateful. You're not called to be hateful. You're called to be the good news. You're not called to be superior. You're called to be children of God. And if that in itself is superior, then you're calling others to be as well. It's not something that's only isolated for a selected few who can help. Because matter of fact, if you think about it, if we deal with black superiority or white superiority or brown superiority or, or Jew superiority or any of those superiorities, those things are all perishing. And then you have to go and meet God and you're all accountable to God. So let's do the right thing. Let's learn to love one another. You're not called to be hateful. You're not called to be superior. You're not called to seek vain glory. You're called to preach the gospel. And you, and most of you who claim to be Christians are really making it a challenge for those who want to preach the gospel because the history of those who proclaim their Christians, but we're not, because the tree is no last fruit. You are trying to tell people that we're evil, we're hateful, we're, we're judgmental, and we want to keep you out, we're supposed to bring you in. We're supposed to bring in the world, saints, if you are in Christ. But for you that's not in Christ, God is saying, I want you. And it doesn't matter how low you go, I want you to repent and come toward him. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.